Hello, and you are very welcome to this pit stop for Crystal Palace, a game designed by Carsten Lauber, published by Capstone Games and Forlound Spieler. In Crystal Palace, each of the players is going to represent a nation in the two and a half year build up to the first ever World Fair at the Crystal Palace in Hyde Park in London. And over those two and a half years, over five rounds of play, you're looking to score the most points to be the winner. It is a two to five player game taking around two hours. Okay. Each of these five years is split into seven phases. In the first phase, you're going to take all of the dice, and these represent your workers, and you're going to choose what faces to put on them in order to take actions later on in this turn. Now, whatever faces you choose, you're then going to have to pay for the complete total here. In this case, I've paid 14, so I throw that in. So choosing higher is going to give you more options when it comes to taking actions. However, it's going to cost you more money. Once everyone has chosen secretly, we reveal our dice. Whoever has put the most money in has got the highest value is going to be the first player for this turn. We go clockwise. Whoever has got the lowest value is going to get a newspaper. Now, a newspaper is just a track here. It's a flexible sort of a resource in the game, which you can hand in in order to get other things, including extra workers or movement or various things or taking these gears in order to help build the stuff you're looking to build for the fair. So what are we going to do? On the next phase, phase two, is when we place our workers out onto these eight different locations within the game. Now, when you place a worker, you must match the die value to the minimum value on the worker space. For example, this two could not go here or here. It would have to come over here in this one space, and that's okay. The reason you're doing that is, is because the highest value dice are going to get to go first, and there's a limited number of action spaces on each board, fewer than there are dice placement spaces. So you can outbid each other with the values of your dice. Now, when you place, if you're one of the last or you've got a low value one, it may cost you some money. However, when you go to certain spaces, that gives you assistant actions. And that's generally to do with going into the black market in order to get some sort of income during the game or to allow you to do your own personal objectives, which we're going to come back to. OK, so everyone's going to go around and they're going to place their dice out one at a time into various areas around the board until everyone has placed all the dice they have. And generally people have between four and six, although it's possible to get rid of dice as well in the game in order to score points. Okay, once that's all done, we're then gonna start on location one, the patent office, and work our way around the eight locations. And as I said, the highest value is always gonna go first, ties broken from left to right. Over in the patent office, as you come down, the first two spaces will give you those newspapers again, which tends to happen. Sometimes they'll give you buzz. Uh, also, sometimes they might cost you money. In the patent office, you simply take one of the patents and you put them to the side of your board. You can have as many patents as you wish and they don't do anything else. They're going to sit there for now. In the British Museum, you get to take a research tile. When you take a research tile, it comes in here. Now, that's going to give you a one-off bonus or it's going to give you some sort of income when we get to phase six. But also, each of these spaces in here is going to cost you two points if it's not covered at the end of the game. And this is one of the two ways in which you can cover these spaces. In the Bank of England, you're going to get access to shares. They're going to boost up your income, and they may also give you a handful of points there. Down here in Westminster, you're going to be looking to increase your reputation. Now, the reason we increase your reputation is because it's going to give you a one-off sort of bonus for doing so. However, it's also going to reduce the wages you have to pay to characters, which is the next place in the Reform Club. When you come down to the reform club, you choose a character, but unlike the patents, you must immediately pay the cost of that character. In this case, it's going to cost me gears and energy for Adolf Sachs, and those are two of the other resources in the game, and it's generally going to cost you gears and energy always to turn these patents into prototypes. It might cost you some money to recruit characters, and they'll go back to the bank, and you can take that character. Now, characters might have one-off powers that they do immediately. There's 30 of them, and they've all got all sorts of different powers. They may also have an effect in phase four of the game, which we're going to discuss. You're going to score points for building these characters. Now, generally, the ones that cost you something during the game for something are going to score you more points early for building, and ones that give you a steady income will score you more points for building later in the game. You flip that over and put it there, and you can see we still have our phase four effect going on. Also, it should be noted that between characters and certain inventions like the Steam Saxophone and Adolf Sax, there is a combination going on and you score extra points for making those combinations. The characters can have all sorts of different effects in the game. We're going to move on to the London Times here. When you go to London Times, these are modulars, four of these are provided and you play with one. And in each of the rounds, it's going to tell you a certain condition it wants you to have reached. And if you reach that condition, then you're going to score 
buzz points. Okay, so in this case, it wants me to have built prototypes. Um, depending upon the number of prototypes I've built, if I go there, I will move up this buzz track. How much is London talking about the German exhibition? In this case, I'm Germany coming up at the World Fair. As you move up this buzz track, you're going to get one off bonuses as you go past these. Again, these are modular. However, these are these posters spaces here. When you go past the poster space, you may, if you wish to, put one of your only two buzz markers into play. And that's going to give you a steady stream of points throughout the course of the game. The ones lower down give you fewer points, but obviously it's harder to get to the ones further up. And once you've placed both your buzz markers, you can't place anymore. So even if I got up to this 11, I've got no more. I can't move them up there. So buzz is giving me chat and steady income off points. Over in the Port of London, I can hire more workers to bring into play for me, which I can place. So I'm going to have to pay, obviously, and they won't come into play till next round. Also, I can get some gears to help me build stuff. And also, I can give workers back into the game if I want to score points. And the earlier I do that, the more points I'm going to score. But it's limited to three of those total in the whole game to be done. Over at Waterloo Station, we can generate some energy or we can get some more buzz for this track. Once everyone's taken them all off and taken all of their actions, we're then gonna move on. In phase four, you're gonna get your character actions, whatever they may be, and have to pay them according to where you are on the Westminster track. There's a little track down here on each character. In phase five, you can turn your patents into prototypes. Again, it's gonna cost you gears, it's gonna cost you energy. You can do a maximum of two on each turn and they're gonna score you a certain number of points depending upon which year you're in because there's two rounds in 49, two in 50, and one round in 1851. And again, they synergize with certain characters and they have all sorts of effects, including sometimes slightly negative effects which you could possibly play on other players. Phase six is when we get our income. First of all, you're gonna get some money for where you're on the income track, but once you've got that money, every player is gonna incur expenses and they're gonna come three spaces down there. So you're gonna to need to continually boost this up during the course of the game. If you get very low down, it starts costing you points and also it might start costing you money. Now, any time during the game, if you don't have enough money, be it for a cost or you just want to buy some things, you may take a loan. The loan tiles are the second way in which you're going to cover up these minus two areas, but the bad news is each loan unpaid is going to be between minus eight and minus 10 points. It's random which ones you get from the pile. If you ever pay that 10 money back to the bank, you do get to flip it over and it becomes a minus five. You'd also get income here from these research tiles or from anything else that might give you things, including this black market. Now I said we get assistant actions. One of the assistant actions is each different nation has got a different set of objectives. In this case, it's for building prototypes. And as an assistant action, I can simply move up and I'll claim those points at the end of the game. The other one is to go into the black market. When I get an assistant action for placing a die, I can move in, pay a certain amount of money, and I sit there. And here in phase six, everyone gets a certain amount of income depending upon where they are. And then everyone shuffles down one so that their income's gonna be different next turn. Now, there are a couple of other things to note with the black market board. At any time, you can move down one space in order to take one of these gears to help you build things. Or if the black market ever gets completely filled up and you can go in or you can jump on assistant action, only the last assistant to go in will stay and all the rest will get kicked out because that black market has crashed. We're on to phase seven of each round in which we're going to get four new patents, we're going to get four more characters, we're going to get new uh, research tiles, we're going to get new shares, everything's just going to reset, you're going to get all your diebacks, including extra ones you may have earned during the course of the game, and we will move on to the next round. Come the end of the game, after the five rounds, we're going to check and see where everyone is on the victory point track. There is a handful of extra scoring to be done called silver victory points, that just means end game scoring points. First, second and third on the buzz track are going to score themselves a few points there. In the black market, again, first, second, and third are a very few points. You're then gonna check your player mat. How well have you achieved your particular goal that your country wants? Again, they're all different ones for each of the 10 countries in the game. You're gonna check all your loans, that's gonna cost you points. You're gonna check these uncovered spaces, that's gonna cost you points. And once you've made those adjustments, we're gonna check the rich point track. And whoever has scored the most points will be the winner of Crystal Palace. This has been a Game Pit Pit Stop. For more videos like this, check out our YouTube channel. For more in-depth coverage of gaming, please check out the Game Pit podcast. Thank you.